first artist talk uh, in conjunction with the Threads of Hope exhibit at the Alberta Council for Ukrainian for the Ukrainian Arts in Edmonton, Acula. So, just a word about um, bringing this show to town. Um, it was uh, through a connection that I have that uh, I learned of uh, an opening in the gallery this summer and I made inquiries and fortunately there was um, a fan exhibition available to mount in this space <clears throat> in the period where there was a vacancy. So I'm really pleased to have uh, Threads of Hope in Edmonton because um, I just think it's quite a compelling exhibit with the, the red ribbon of hope running through all pieces in the exhibit. And of course, the stories behind each piece are, are really, um, some of them are heartbreaking, some of them are heartwarming, but, but it makes for uh, an opportunity to enrich the viewer's understanding of the work and what inspired the work. Right? Our first uh, speaker is Judy Weiss from Edmonton. Um, Judy's been a fiber artist since about what, 2006, oh, no, I guess it is. Okay. And uh, she is a mixed media artist. She uses um, far more than just fabric and thread to create her works. And she has recently, in 2018, completed um, her fine art certificate from the University of Alberta. And Judy works in many different um, mediums in order to add, add texture to the surface of uh, her work. And in her work, she says she shares her sense of wonder at the natural world, and especially the wide open prairie of Western Canada. Right. So Judy has been quite successful in her career as a fiber artist and had her work exhibited in Canada and the United States and internationally in touring shows. Mm -hmm. Okay, and without further ado, we give you Judy Weiss. Thank you, Sharon. Welcome, everybody. It's good to see you here. I'm going to give you today a little bit of an overview of the Threads of Hope exhibition. But to begin, you may or may not know what FAN, or Fiber Art Network, is all about. So, um, we are an organization, a cooperative, of artists from the four western provinces, from the Northwest Territories, the Yukon, and Nunavut. Our goals are to promote fiber as a fine art form, and that may take um, the appearance of quilting, it may take the appearance of felting, it may take needlework, it may take anything in which you incorporate fiber and cloth. Many of the members are mixed media artists who um, enhance the surface with things that are normally associated with other media, and I'll be talking about that a little bit and giving you examples of those through the talk. Um, our goals are, as I said, were to promote the awareness of fiber as a medium, but it's also to educate, to present fiber and fiber works as art um, to students and in educational settings through shows and through presentations. Threads of Hope is one of our four current touring exhibitions, and there is a fifth one coming online. I believe it's next month, starting in British Columbia, and it's called Chromatopia. All of those exhibitions are available online. You can see all of the works, the bios, and the artist statements about each work on the Fiber Art Network website. It's fiberart, spelled R-E, the Canadian way, dot com, fiberartnetwork.com. Um, to tell you just a little bit about the uh, Threads of Hope exhibition, there are 55 pieces that are around the gallery on the walls. I've taken a few of them down so that I can use them as examples in this talk. And these 55 pieces were done by 48 different artists. The artists were asked a series of questions about what concerns them for the future. Um, what are their desires for our society, our culture, uh, for the world, and what solutions do they see to the problems that we're facing? So they were all given those same questions to consider, and they were given a couple of parameters to work with. One was that the size had to be uniform, so all the pieces are the same size, and they were also given instruction that there had to be a metaphorical 
red line that connected one piece to the next. It had to run from one side to the other in some uh, one third of the piece so that when they were hung, that red line would connect all of the works together. And it represents hope that is a common thread in mankind. So the art that you see today is a visual response to the, what those artists felt and what meaning there was for each issue for them. So um, just looking at art, artists and commentary on culture, art and artists have been historically kind of a mirror of the culture that they work in. And I like to think of the art not just as a reflection, but more as a prism that the cultural issues, the things that we face each day are like the beam of light going into that prism. And the artists themselves are the prism. And what comes out the other end is a scattering of light. It's a, it's a collection, it's a myriad of thoughts, of impressions, of experiences, of hopes and dreams. It's all of the things that are contained with them, within them that come out as visual experience and visual expression. So this Threads of Hope exhibition, for me, is like a prism. And what you see are the reflective beams of culture from 48 different people on 55 different subjects. It is, in fact, a record of our culture today. And, and it, for me, is very dynamic and really vibrant to see so many expressive pieces here. So if you had to categorize them, and you were looking at Threads of Hope, and you're thinking about the culture and what's reflected today, you might guess that there would be a few commonalities. You might guess that there would be a thread of experiencing COVID. What's it like to live through a pandemic? You might also be looking at things to do with climate change and the environment, and what's it like to be looking at a world that everyone shares a fear is going to implode. Um, so I was looking at those kinds of issues and culture in how I was analyzing the quilts and how I would present them to you. By far the, the most common issue is that human attitudes and personal responsibility for change are by far the most important source of hope for all of the artists here. Um, I counted at least 19 quilts out of 55 that in some way dealt with personal responsibility, personal choices, personal um, impact that we can have on one another, on world peace, and on all of the issues we face. The topics included peace and perseverance, being inspired by heroes like Terry Fox, who's shown here. Some of the topics were learning from the past and leading other people towards hope, and I'll be showing you an example of that too. Some quilts were about second chances and forgiveness and starting over, and some were about healing, and some were about overcoming the obstacles that we face every day. It was really a journey for me to see these quilts and to be looking at what the motivations were behind them. All of them seemed to be about overcoming and things that, overcoming the things that divide us like race and war, and overcoming them with education and understanding and compassion. So I'm just going to give you two examples of that number one theme that came through all over. So the first one is called Loose Threads, and it's by Pat Moore. So this piece um, was done by Pat Moore, and it's really about learning from the past and attitudes. This piece has many loose ends. Most of us have loose ends in our lives, things that we would like to do over and perhaps never to have done at all. Don't waste time worrying about what's behind us. Figure out what we can do better going forward. There will always be loose ends. Let's make them positive ones and figure out how to bring hope into the lives of the people around us. So just from an artistic point of view, I want to point out that this is almost a monochromatic quilt. And the layers of the surface um, include the cloth surface, it includes hand stitching on top of that, and it includes um, uh, beading that has been attached loosely with threads to really illustrate what she was talking about visually. Um, her stitches, uh, when you look at it without having read the statement, the meaning of the beading and the stitches is a bit enigmatic. It just, it doesn't tell you specifically what she had in mind. 
but those stitches and the, the color variations act together to make the viewer engage with the quilt and ask them why she did those things. And then the artist statement backs that up and shows her meaning and her intent behind the work. The next one that we're going to show is by Diana Bartlins, and this one is called Cycle of Life. This one is also a, a very engaging quilt. It, it has a wonderful meaning behind it, which speaks to me mostly of perseverance. Diana's artist statement is, as the sockeye salmon come to the end of their lives, they leave their life in the ocean. Their color changes from green to brilliant red, and they become very competitive. Fighting their way upstream in the rivers, they face all kinds of obstacles and hazards to reach their spawning pools. They set off on this journey with hope to be able to reach their place of birth and perpetuate the next generation. When I first looked at this quilt, I was looking at it as though it was an ecological statement. And in fact, it isn't that at all. The artist's statement tells me that it's about perseverance, and it's about hope, and it's about doing what we were born to do. And um, artistically speaking, it's a complementary color scheme. It's alive with movement. Diana has used um, line and focus to move us from place to place within it, and it's very effectively done. And the, the sparkle of the color scheme establishes a real mood of hope and that movement upstream. We know that the sockeye spawning is going to end their lives at the end of their journey, but the hope is for the future and their hope is for the next generation. So this is a thoughtful piece. It's about endings and beginnings and perseverance. And I'm gonna go back to my surprises and not surprises from the themes that were presented here. Not surprisingly, the second most um, predominant theme, and I counted at least 12 quilts, the environment, ecosystems, and human responsibility for these was the number two theme. And given global warming and the predominance of that in the news today, it's not a surprise that, that the earth, biospheres, um, ecosystems, oceans, melting sea ice, all of these were represented. It was hard for me to choose, and so I left out the quilts where you could clearly see what the theme was or what what they were presenting in them. And I chose ones that had some other special abstract meaning. So in this particular one with Krista's uh, example, she, her artist statement says, 50 years ago, Earth was first filmed from space as a white flecked blue sphere that awed astronauts. We now realize that the air, the oceans, the soil is much more than a mere environment for life. They're part of life itself. We must cherish the gift of the earth. And so Krista's take on the environmental issues that we face today is that we need to treat them as a gift and not as something that we take for granted. So artistically speaking in this quilt, I was very impressed with the simplicity of the forms that she used. She has one central globe and the symbolic use of a ribbon that wraps around the globe. Her use of color is very strong and the high contrast attracts people's eye from far away in the gallery. The image with the wrapping ribbon as a symbol is both attractive and meaningful. And so she presents an issue that has a lot of negatives, a lot of controversy, a lot of hot tempers in a way that is presented in something soft and that deserves embracing the idea of a gift. So that was one of the ones that I chose that perhaps wasn't as obvious um, in the particular issue, but was very valuable in symbolic meaning. So the next one that I would like to talk about is Vivian Capusta's work, and it's called Showing Our Love for Our Planet. Vivian's statement is, we need to care about our planet and do what we can as individuals to lessen our impact on the environment. All species need clean air to breathe, viable water to drink. The complex interaction of all creatures, plants and soils, can cause collapse of life as we know it, if we do not take action. So her um, purpose in making this was to urge us to action. And it's a very clear idea, but one that's been presented in a very interesting way. She has used color to establish a mood of urgency. If you look at the reds and the high contrasts that are in it, 
Um, you'll see the almost flame-like heat that's running down the one side, contrasted with the vivid bright greens on the other side. Again, a complementary color scheme. She's used very interesting surface design techniques, which may not be immediately available or immediately visible when you're looking at the piece. Um, she has used dyeing techniques, she's used surface painting, she's used thread play, she's used couching, she has put a lot of different techniques into this quilt so that it would be actually a standalone piece, even if it was not, um, if you were not looking at it for the specific meaning of the piece in Threads of Hope. Um, uh, to my way of thinking, a distinguished art piece is one that can stand alone regardless of what the art artist says about it. It's what the viewer interprets and how they feel about it. And this one is very successful in terms of mood and use of color and use of technique. So then the third thing that we came about, um, and this was really the, the last of the three main themes that came out, and this one is the importance of family. It's the influence of family, the hope for our children, um, overcoming the influences around us by, by kindness and that being around the family table. There was both hope and fear expressed in the quilts, in the various pieces that are in the show. Um, there was gratitude for people who have shaped the particular artist, and there was hope that a person's influence would carry on for different generations. There was regret for the choices that were being made and the harm done to loved ones by their, their own choices and by the influences of society. And we mentioned heroes earlier, and there was a piece done about Terry Fox. There was a piece about a mom who inspired hope in a little girl with her story of falling leaves. So this piece that Sharon is holding right now is called The Seat at the Table, and it's by artist Teresa Shaw. In her artist statement, she says, it all boils down to family dinner. My hope is that someday everyone will have a seat at the world's table. Will there be enough food to go around? Will all the voices be heard and respected? Can you just imagine? This piece, when I first saw it, I did not understand. But when I read the artist statement and saw the use of the dinner table as a, sort, a symbol of cooperation and peace and plenty, and when I saw the use of heirloom textiles that had been upcycled and recycled, it began to add new meaning and personal connection for me to the artist who was thinking along those lines. And now it's become one of my favorite pieces in the show. So that I think is symbolic of one of the major themes and that's why I'm showing it here. So now the next piece um, is called For the Children and it's by Yvonne Rankel. And this piece is really outstanding for the figure work that's on it and for the surface design uh, that has produced, I believe she has used either inks or uh, paint sticks to be able to produce the faces, perhaps pencil crayon, I can't tell from, without actually touching it or talking to her. But Yvonne's uh, theme says, what do I hope for my grandchildren? We don't know what the future holds, so just try to do the best you can. Reach for the stars. Believe in yourself. Even a small child can change the course of the future. So the outstanding aspects of this to me were the wonderful use of the figures. She's incorporated strong lines to create movement and to keep the viewer's eye within the work. And she's used the ribbon, the threads of hope, and the words, the text that she's put on top of them to express the meaning and the uh, connection between the characters in her work. It's, it's a very strong correlation to the Threads of Hope theme, and it was one of the, what I consider to be one of the best examples of this family and hope and future generations within this entire uh, exhibition. So those were the three main themes. There was a tie for fourth and fifth, and those ties were uh, people who believe in science as a key or a hope for the future. And the other, there were three pieces that were done, four pieces that were done on that. And the other uh, thing that was tied was spirituality, faith, and hope in religion. Um, and, and that the inner workings, the spiritual side of man, also holds the key to the future. So as part of my um, 
explanation of what I was going to say in this talk was talking about mixed media work. And when people ask me as an artist about mixed media, I tell them, well, I combine cloth and fiber with paint or with um, elements that I put onto the surface. Or, uh, and then as you start to say that, the first it's the word fiber, because many people don't know what that means, but then fiber and mixed media textiles makes sometimes the eyes glaze over and people just don't know what it means. So I thought I would talk about what it means to be a mixed media artist and then show you some examples here of what that means. Now, this is Judy's definition, so others may have their own opinion. Mixed media means a mix of media outside of your primary materials and methods of working. The word mix is the key there. So if my primary means of working is fiber, that would mean to be fiber, cloth, um, thread, wool, um, synthetics, whatever types of cloth or thread I would use as my primary media. I would be working generally on a cloth substrate rather than a canvas or a board or something that another artist might use. So in fiber work, sewing techniques and cloth are your main media. And that might look like machine quilting, applique, whatever. But the mix of media refers to what other methods and materials you use that are not normally put together. So two examples are application of surface treatments like acrylic paint, oil paint, ink, pencils, digital prints, monoprints, cyanotypes, dye printing, silk screening, lino cuts, um, figurative thread sketching, and these things will be done on your substrate, which is generally cloth of some type, and you will alter the surface. You'll work right on the surface to be preparing it with an image. The other type of mixed media would be an application of non-cloth materials to, that go above the surface. So you're working in layers, you might have put on paint, you might have put on another layer of cloth, you might have put on another layer of something else. Then you would maybe add inclusions like metals or found objects, um, adhesions, you might be gluing things on, you might be incorporating paper into your cloth, um, colored paper, printed paper, you might be doing photo transfers, and there are examples of those in the quilts here. And again, adding recycled or upcycled materials. It could be rubber, plastic, anything like that. Your processes, which you add on top of the surface, might be heating, distressing. Um, you could be sewing, but you could be gluing, you could be melding, and you could be taking things away too. You could be bleaching, you could be distressing, you could be burning things. And all of those are not normally associated with cloth as we know it for clothing or for producing even an art quilt. So my two categories are what you do on the surface with non-traditional cloth materials or methods and what you do to build the surface up after you've begun the surface itself. So one is surface design and the other one is manipulation or building of the surface. So that's what I mean by mixed media. Okay, so now, this first one is by Diane Firth, and I won't read the artist statement because it's fairly um, obvious that Diane's concern has been the ecology and the environment, but this is called Bees and Seas, and I want to just point out some of the things that you would be seeing in it. In this region up here, Diane has incorporated a method of dyeing that's called ice dyeing. She has um, taken ice cubes and snow poured the dyes over the fabric, allowed it to all melt together, and it's a totally random process for addition of color. And she's used it very effectively as a background here. It looks very spring-like, very flower-like, and she has done thread sketching on top of it to enhance that as a flower medium. And she has appliqued, which is a traditional cloth um, um, technique, to create a bumblebee on top of it. In the center portion where she's depicted the globe, it's a very impressionistic um, version of the globe, but she has actually felted that. So she has not taken a piece of cloth and worked on it. She's actually created the cloth itself. And the use of color is, is from mixing and it mixes on the surface in the process of wet felting. So that's um, another mixing of media. 
She's also done raised surface techniques in this area, where, and in this area down here, where she has created something that's called chenille, which was a time-honored process that is commonly used for making bed coverings, but she has applied it within an art context and actually raised the surface. So this is a very dimensional piece. She's also created inclusions, which are at the bottom of the piece here. She's included netting, she's included um, small fish, and she's included found objects that look perhaps like a shark's tooth. And below this, she has depicted a sort of underwater scene and used heavy stitching to go in with that over an ice dive. She's also included a pair of watchful eyes that are very thematic in saying we need to watch what happens with our bees and with our seas. So this piece is probably got more uh, mixed media inclusions than most of the things that you'll see in the show, but she's used them all effectively within one particular piece. Yep. Okay. And it's bees, B-E-E-S, and seas, S-E-A-S. Mm -hmm. yeah. So her title is creative as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then, the next one is, um, it's called it's Plants Are the Hope for Our Planet by Janet Bednarczyk. Okay, so this one is applique shapes. She has used sun printing, which is a technique with acrylic paint for coloring the fabric. And she's used upcycled linen fabrics within the piece on top of a cotton substrate. So, um, I just felt that this one was very interesting because of her use of stitch, because of her use of varied materials, and for the, the use of color. And these are analogous colors on the color wheel, which has a sense of excitement from the degree of stitching that's put on it, but the analogous colors help to quiet it down and to keep it um, sort of in a controlled kind of mood. So those are my two examples of mixed media. And I'm coming close to time, so I'm going to uh, just talk one minute or two about the importance of an artist statement as you are looking through the show. The artist statements are on cards under each of the pieces with a photograph of the piece itself. This first one, if you pull this up, this is by Jan Scruggs. And Jan is a friend of mine, and um, I have admired her work for a very long time. When I looked at this piece, again, I thought it was a hands-on piece about the state of the world. And I didn't, it wasn't clear to me at the beginning what the issue was that she was talking about until I read the artist statement. And it tells me how clearly and how heartbreaking it must have been to make this piece. Her artist statement is in 2017, 367 people died of an overdose in the province of Alberta. My son Kevin was one. Those suffering from the disease of addiction have little hope. Detox, rehab, new start, failure, street, overdose, hospital, and back again in a never-ending, unbreakable cycle. For most, the cord of hope is torn, frayed down to an ungraspable thread, not nearly strong enough to break the chains that bind them. And yet hope whispers, try one more time. This is a very moving piece for me, and I can only relate to how hard it must have been for Janet to make this. And yet, it's a message of hope for the world. Try, 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 and love, love, love. So we'll put that down, and we'll talk about the next one. Weaving the World by Karen Johnson is again, an unusual piece. Um, it is a story that many cultures tell about the wise old woman who weaves the world together, creating it anew when chaos erupts and the threads of life have been torn apart. Respect for the diversity of our world can lead us to new wisdom and ways of being together as the world is woven anew. And in this piece, Karen has um, taken scraps and, and busted into her stash, as quilters say, and she has woven this piece as opposed to quilting it, but then she's used traditional quilting techniques on top to applique her thread of hope on top of it. 
it's an unusual piece and, and it's full of color and it's just fun to look at and I really enjoyed the theme of it. So I'm going to stop there because our time is up and I think that we have given um, a good look at many of the pieces in the show and talked about um, several things that you'll be able to go back and relate to now. So in closing, uh, the, this Threads of Hope show closes here at the ACUA Gallery on the 21st of July, but we do have an, a list of the venues and dates where it will be open other places. If you're interested, go to the fiberartnetwork.com site and click on uh, shows or click on events and all the pieces will be there and the dates will be there as well. If you're interested in fan membership, uh, we have cards here at the exhibit and there's also information on the website for you there. And I just want to say thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure to be with you and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs>